Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are we doing? It's Russ here from Porky's Corner. Today, we're joined by Drew, making his debut from the sector of London. How are we doing, Drew? Yeah, very good. Thanks, Russ. How are you? I'm all right, mate. Uh, you've got a, a particular topic that you like to start with. Fire away. You've got the floor. Yeah, so basically, it's one of my biggest frustrations within boxing, really. So it's not... I don't think it's a major topic and I don't think it's spoke about enough. Um, essentially, it's matchmaking that gets spoke about all the time, but it's how we develop prospects or new pros. So the first issue I have is the first 10 fights, the, the quote unquote learning fights. Yeah. I think we're literally doing it like it's the 40s again, where Basically, you'd put people in with the local fighters just to basically build a name, build a reputation, and also they can learn on the job. But it was more for promotional value back in the day. That's why you'd fight the local fighters yeah, to beat them and get a name and build them up. Whereas now, with the huge push from social media, especially Matchroom, Eddie Hearn, um, you've got the push from either Sky, BT, whichever sort of promotional banner they're with, they don't need those first 10 or 15 knockover job fights. Um, and especially if you look at fighters like Joe Joyce, who for me, you know, you've got Sam Jones just rattling on all the time. But the way he's actually fought, he has done it the right way. He's literally gone into quite difficult fights straight away. And to be honest, I know he's got a short career and he can't be built up because he had a huge amateur sort of experience. But that's how all fighters should come up because... Like I was saying to you before we sort of uh, stepped on, is you don't get your local football team like Liverpool filled all their under sort of 21s, all their prospects against the local Saturday team, beating them 21 0 because they're not going to learn anything. And that's exactly what the first 10 professional fights are for a lot of these people that turn over young, like Daniel Dubois. They learn absolutely nothing knocking over people real fast or early. They're not working on any tools. Um, no close fights, and as soon as they get into a difficult fight, they end up quitting or it doesn't go well and they don't have the stomach for it. And I think matchmaking is is basically outdated and the sport has kind of moved on, but the promoters are not doing that. Yeah, I think, I, I think you've got a point there. If you look at Anthony Joshua and Joe Joyce's career, Joe Joyce didn't have the... They're not the 15 straight knockovers that Anthony Joshua did, did he, before he got a title shot. He got he got straight stuck down to business in his first few fights, didn't he, Joyce? And he kept them yeah. up going, hasn't he? Yeah, exactly. And uh, Joyce, you could argue, doesn't have the same sort of following or, or the same profile as Anthony Joshua. And people could look at the first fights, but it's nothing to do with that, is it? it it's all to do with the... The, uh, the promoter he's with, the channel he's with, and, of course, um, the fact that he did get that gold medal and the country loved him because it was the home Olympics, whereas Joyce obviously did it somewhere else and it's relatively unknown. He's not a great talker, but ultimately, for boxing fans, which I consider myself to be, you know, I much prefer Joyce's career over Anthony Joshua's so far. I think that Joe Joyce beats Anthony Joshua and I'm on record and saying it now. I think, he, I think he stops him. I think, um, yeah, I have my opinion on Anthony Joshua. I, I think that'd be a tough fight um, for both. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I, I could call it, but I'd have my sort of roots to victory. I think, I think Anthony Joshua, as soon as it gets tough, and we haven't seen it enough, um, I think his biggest problem is his gas tank. And I think it will happen against Fury as well. I think you'll end up seeing him he'll gas out after six rounds and he won't be able to sort of handle the pace. As soon as the pace is too fast, I think Andy Josh will lose. Yeah, I think Joe Joyce breaks him down. Do you know what I mean? That's what I, yeah. what I mean. But uh, what, what, what her job, what Eddie Earn's job is and his old man, Bazza, what their job is to navigate Joshua through choppy waters and to avoid certain styles, certain fights certain get to, is to avoid certain issues with matchmaking because it's the matchmaking that's going to keep them earning and this is why they have to have good opponents that suit their style 
I don't think Lewis Ortiz suits Anthony Joshua. I think he'd technically be too much for him. Same as I would Lewis Ortiz against Dylan White. No matter how, how much older Lewis Ortiz gets, he's still going to have more in his locker than Dylan White. And I think Joe Joyce, as regards fitness, power and sheer brute force, I think he'd just break Joshua down. I do. I think Tyson Fury beats Joshua as well. And so they're going to try and swerve them. And I'm, I'm starting to get to a point where I don't even think Joshua against Fury happens. I think there's too much at risk for them all. I do, honestly. It's been going on that long now. It's become boring, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, for me, you know, when they confirmed this fight, what, six months ago? Um, and we all knew. Huh? Six and a half months ago, it was a signed deal. Yeah, exactly. And we all knew that it wasn't a signed deal. Like, you can you can say what you want for publicity, and I get why they're doing it. They're just making themselves the only relevant names in the heavyweight division, but... Yeah, I agree, Drew. I agree. I think your face has just frozen. On... I can't see that fight happening. Uh, right. Maybe the fighters do, but I don't think the promotion... Hello? Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so, I think it's there's too many problems with the promotional outfits, the, the the TV stations, and everything else. Yeah, I think there's too many egos involved. Maybe Tyson Fury and Joshua want to fight, but maybe the people behind them pulling the strings, maybe they'd rather just stay as they are, stay as they are, earning and keeping the the keeping a bit of momentum going playing it safe, you know, that accountant mentality. Yeah, and I, I don't blame them either, really, but it's not good for boxing, and ultimately, you know, it, it's casual boxing, isn't it? And I say that, like, I'm not actually a hardcore myself, but I'm, I'm sort of that in-between from hardcore to casual, like, um, but it's... Yeah, I'm so yeah, exactly. Literally an in-betweener, um, because I, I can't say I'm interested in every weight division, um... I watch every fight that's on pretty much, but, you know, I have my set divisions that I like, but it's, for me, I feel like I enjoyed Matchroom when they first came along because it sort of brought more people's eyes to the sport, but now I'm sick of the, the, the sort of carry on, the, the, the fact that it's very, very much WWE, like if, you know, you go into the pubs, people talk about boxing, like Matchroom is the only, like they are actually a governing body that they, they think Matchroom fighters are the only fighters that exist. They yeah. don't know about Canelo's and Triple G's and fighters in other other weight divisions that don't belong to, to Eddie Hearn, like Crawford. They're missing out on all the sort of actual good boxers. And like I've said before to, to a lot of people that I speak to, I, I don't feel English talent is elite talent. I, I always feel that, as we've seen, we always seem to come up short yeah. on the big stage. Yeah, you might be right there. There's something missing in there at elite level from our lads. Yeah, absolutely. Just that touch, something missing. I don't know what it is, if it's mental, something mental or what. I think there's just there's something missing. Oh, would you say that uh, probably Tyson Fury is probably the best fighter in Britain at the moment then? and Josh Taylor as regards elite? Yeah, I would say absolutely those two. I think that purely on the fact that they have the belts and um, the fact that he's, um, you know, he has beat Klitschko and he has done a few other bits in the heavyweight division. You have to put Anthony Joshua in there. Me personally, I don't see Anthony Joshua as an elite level with a skill set, but I think you have to, by resume, you have to sort of stick him in there. And I think they're the only three. Um, but one thing I would say, and I don't want to discredit the heavyweight division, but the fact is these guys are both huge and good athletes. Tyson Fury is a bit of a freak the way he moves. Anthony Joshua is just pure athlete. Um, and I just think that's the only division you can sort of do that in, right? So if you actually look at what I consider the boxing divisions, which are the lower divisions, we only actually have Josh Taylor um, for skill set wise. And I, I think that is an indictment to the, the, the coaches here in the UK and the way that we promote and, I guess, work with the boxers. They just don't have enough on world level. They just don't have, whether it be the skill set, the determination, 
every fight you look at, it's, you know, the classic, um, you know, dare to be great. Why is it someone, no one else is daring to be great against the UK fighters because they're just not good enough. You know, we don't have a Glockin, we don't have a Canelo. We, I don't think we ever really have, have we, in those divisions? Proper, proper ice men that, that literally scare the world. No one wants to fight them. No, I Joel, mean, when he went over to America, he were, he, were, he were ripping shit up years ago, late 80s, early 90s. But yeah. A long time ago, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And I, I, I was born sort of early 90s. So, you know, that I sort of missed that boat, you know. So um, since I've sort of been alive, we haven't, since I've been watching boxing rather, not alive, we haven't had that scary fighter. I, I guess they tried to make Anthony Joshua as close to that as possible, I suppose. Do you feel that uh, Josh Warrington and Billy Joe can be added to that top tier with Tyson Fury and Josh Taylor? No, I don't. Um, because personally, I don't think Billy Joe has a, a hope against Canelo if he were to fight him or even a prime GGG. I, I love Billy Joe Saunders. I think he's a great fighter. And if you enjoy foot, uh, football, if you enjoy boxing, he's pretty much like Huey Fury to me. Someone I look at and I'm just like, I love the skills. I love the way of boxing. I love all that. However, I just think at the elite level, they're always going to come short. Um, even though I really enjoy watching them and their skill set. Um, regarding Warrington, I, I just don't think he's good enough. I know he's got a world title. I just think his skill set and everything there, he's just not, it's, it's an, again, not an elite skill set. The opposite to Billy Joe. He's there from hard work. He's worked super hard. He's, he trains. He doesn't cut any corners and his skill sets. Mm. Whereas Billy Joe's skill sets up here, but doesn't train hard, doesn't have the, you know, I think he Billy Joe would be happy to go to America and lose to Canelo to get a payday, but not get knocked out. That would be his goal, I think. A bit like Martin Murray when he fought Billy Joe. He just wanted to get a small payday and get do the rounds. Yeah, but the difference is with Martin Murray is I understand it because he's not world level at all. Um, you know, arguably back in his prime, you'd say maybe he's European slash he could have been world level. So I understand that. There's pride there. Billy Joe thinks he's the best, but we all know he's not. He doesn't fight anyone. He doesn't, he doesn't do things that suggest he's the best. And that's why I, I can't see him doing anything. Yeah. Do you see Billy Joe petering out and that and just having a lot of time off again like he has been doing for the last five years? Um... Oh, it's a tough one, really. It, it depends on his next fight, when it's going to be and who it's against, because I do think he knows he has two years left. I think Billy J. Saunders is on the decline anyway. Um, and the fact that he went up a weight division, I think is only bad. He doesn't have very good punch resistance. I can't remember who he fought um, before Murray, but he was rubbish. And he wobbled Billy Joe. He hurt him. And I just think if you're getting hurt, at that level, I know he sort of steps up like he did against Lemieux, but I can't see him touching Canelo. I also think the Andrade fight would be really difficult and, and, and a potential banana skin for him as well, even though I hate them both in terms of um, if their style were to come together. I think that would be a very sort of boring... Hardcores will appreciate the, the skill involved, but it would be a quite boring watch, um, that fight. And I could see... Billy Joe getting jobbed on the, the scorecards there and, you know, his career just basically tittering out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all right, then moving on. What do you think about Chris Eubank Jr.? Where do you think he's heading next? <sighs> Who knows? I mean, he's sort of hidden in America. Um, so I don't think... I don't, I don't think there are plans for Chris Eubank Jr. I think uh, he, he's a celebrity, isn't he, at the end of the day? He loves that lifestyle. He loves being in America. He, I, I actually don't know. I, I do rate Chris Eubank because he's entertaining, um, but I can't see any world titles coming his way. So I, I actually couldn't tell you that, Russ. I think yeah. an enigma as well. Yeah. Uh, okay, then. What do you think about the situation with Joe Gallagher and 
Eddie Earn, do you think there's a bit of intense beef there? Do you think Joe might be getting a bit of a raw deal with his fighters? Um, hmm. Yes and no. So we know there's a bit of beef there. It's it's sort of come out due to the racist comments and things like that. However, personally, Joe Gallagher, I know I know your your thoughts and that he goes to bat for his fighters, but at the end of the day, his fighters are the most inactive, I think. Inactive. And that's worrying. Yeah, inactive in terms of you, you we're not seeing much of uh, Liam Smith. We're not seeing anything of uh, Callum uh, Johnson. And, and I'm, I'm looking at these fighters and I'm just like... Jose Berta. Why aren't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why aren't they fighting? It's uh, whether or not he's managing them or not. I look at that and go... Just to put that to the side. They should be out there. They should be getting fights. And if Eddie Hearn's not providing that, he needs to cancel that deal or at least look to do that and find them fights somewhere else. Because I don't care if he's batting for them or not. We're not seeing them. They're losing years of their career and they're not earning money. So, yeah, I, personally, I don't really rate him either as a coach or as a manager. I do know he backs his, his uh, fighters and is stable, but nah, not for me. What do you think about Conor Bendrew? Um, I think like most people, I think he's he's improved massively. Um, I thought he was an accident waiting to happen. In fact, we've literally seen in his early fights that you know, arguably, he didn't win um, some some early fights. But he's improved massively. I think I'm not sure if he's a world level fighter at all or going to be world level. But again. The, the improvements that he's made. He's turning into a nice little fighter, really good to watch, exciting. And I like his mentality. He's already calling people out. Just, he's acting like a boxer. And ultimately, that's what we want to see, right? People who are take, want to challenge themselves. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree with that, mate. I agree. Uh, what do you think about the legal situation with Fury and Bob Arum and Wilder and Al Heyman? Mm, I mean, how long have you got? Um, yeah, you could talk about this one for ages. I, I have no idea what's happening behind the scenes. I guess Wilder wants his payday because um, obviously they're losing out on money there. Or maybe not Wilder, but his team. Um, I think Bob Arum and everybody still knows that Wilder's dangerous. And if I'm honest, if you were to put that fight again... Do I want to see it? No. But the reason I don't want to see it, because I am admittedly a Fury fan, and I, I just think Fury is his own worst nightmare. And, and, and the truth is, can he motivate himself to beat that guy again? And the fact is, I'm, I'm not sure he can. And therefore, an unmotivated Tyson Fury, I, I just think is a recipe for disaster. And I think Wilder still has a chance of chilling him, obviously, with, with his power. And I just, I don't want to see that fight, nor does anyone else. I'm sure Fury doesn't want to be involved in that fight. And I just, I think it's a potential banana skin, even though everybody's writing it off. Um, just purely on the fact that Fury's mindset going into it is going to be right. Let's just get this out of the way when actually he's still a top heavyweight Wilder. Do you think that Fury's mindset is similar to the one where he had to rematch Vladimir? He, he got his saying to such a position and to go through it all. And then he had to go and do it all again. And he just couldn't go to the well against that person that time. Do you think that that's happening with Wilder rematch? Because he won it comfortably, didn't it, second fight? So why would he have a problem taking the third? I think the, the problem with the third is is literally motivation. So, for example, it's like, I don't know, you, you play snooker, right? Or pool, right? I know you play these sports. Yeah. Now, you can your mate could say best of five. You've beaten three nil. He's like, I'll go on one more game. You don't care about that next game. And he carries on saying one more game until he wins. And then he's sort of won. And you're just like, you, you've been there, obviously. And you're just like, I, I don't care about winning anymore. I've already done it. Like I've already won the game. And I just feel like that is the sort of mentality that Fury might be going in with. Look, I'm look he's looking at the payday. He's looking at Anthony Joshua. He wants that fight because he smells blood. And pretty much everyone would favour Fury at this point for that fight. This is for me, a, like a backward step to fight again. And I think they all know that. So, again, as we know, Fury doesn't motivate himself. 
at the best of times. And I, ju I just I just feel that is a, a banana skin. Fury will probably try and showboat too much. And yeah, there's a potential for a loss there. I, I personally think anyway. Do you think that uh, the, the Americans are going to try and keep Tyson out of the ring as long as they can to try and upset his rhythm and his mental health? Um, nah, I, I don't think so. I, I think, um, I just think the whole COVID situation and you know how Americans are with contracts and, and lawyers and suing and going to court. They're, they're even worse than, you know, Frank Warren. So, um, Nobody's I just, Frank Warren with legal issues, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll have me on the phone after this. And, yeah, um, Frank will be ringing you next. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, um, yeah, I just, the Americans love it. It's their culture there. So, I just genuinely think that they enjoy going to court. I just think it's something for those promoters to do. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with that situation. Like I said, I'd, I don't think they're trying to keep Fury out of the ring at all. I just think they, they want Wilder to get his payday. That that literally is it. And when I say Wilder, I'm talking about Al Heyman and et cetera. So um, they just want their money off Wilder. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about drug situation in boxing at the moment? Do you feel that there is testing going on or do you think that it's being swept under the carpet? Because nobody seems to be putting things on the social media saying, I've just had another drug test and that's the third one in this camp. And we don't seem to be seeing a lot, a lot of people bragging about having these tests, do we? Knowing that they're obviously... But, look, I mean, my, my theory on boxing and drugs... Or elite sport in general, look, it's rife. It's absolutely rife in those sports. I mean, the you've just got to look at how these fighters go up and down the weights. You 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 just got to look at Anthony Joshua. Like anyone who's been to the gym knows that, for example, Anthony Joshua was what, 22, 23 when he turned over pro? Yeah. yeah. He was already an avid gym goer down in Sheffield, working with the strength and conditioning coaches, working with everybody that you could do. So he was already in the gym, drinking protein shakes, working hard, professional boxer. So he was already in that surrounding. All of a sudden, he turns pro, get a year out, and he's massive. He's even bigger than he was before. He's huge. Now, bodybuilders don't go away and put on that much muscle when they're training for competitions, right? Yeah. So how has a fighter who's already in the gym, already drinking protein shakes, already having strength and conditions, all of a sudden put on a stone of muscle and no fat? So that's just one example. It were actually, uh, were it 30 something pound Joshua put on from the Olympics to, were it turning pro or something and his body fat went down or something? That's the, that's the is it the 11 month you're on about where he were from the Olympics to turning pro? Is that? Yeah, exactly. I, I think anybody who knows anything about the gym, um, I worked, I've worked in gyms when I was younger. Um, and, you know, you just know, like, there, there's, there's no way he can train cardio, he can do boxing training and get that big, right? It's just, it's just impossible. And of course, he's never denied the... Uh, TUI. Yeah, exactly. The, the testosterone. Um, it, um, yeah, exactly. He's never denied it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and look, he's not the only one. Don't get me wrong. There's actually no concrete proof of it. So I'm not going to label any Joshua a drug cheat. I just think it's there for everyone to see. But you've got Canelo. You've got Tyson Fury. You've got Billy Joe Saunders. You've got everybody in the Ingle gym. You've got literally everybody and anybody, you know, how did, for example, Tyson Fury lose eight stone in, what, six months? Come on. It's impossible. It's actually impossible. Look at you. You, you know what it's like to lose weight. You cannot drop that much weight so quickly. Uh, uh, no, it's a bit hard. Like, I, mean, I had a gastric band. I, I, I was 28 stone. I'm just under 15 or 15 stone one or something. I think 210 pounds to 11 pounds from 400 or 398 or something. Well, it took me April 2013. I've been on shakes, and if I try to go on solids, I spew it back up. Exactly. But it is hard. But I don't know. I mean, when Tyson were in camp with Peter, they did eight fights all together, and he lost anything from four stone to seven in the eight fights that Peter Fury had him. So he's always been taking weight off. But 
that what you've just said about the eight stone, well, the story they're telling now is ten stone. It just keeps growing. The legend just keeps growing, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I I used to love, I still love Tyson Fury. Don't get me wrong. However, he has become more boring um, in his interviews. Uh, I still think when he's flowing on camera, he's the best sort of with in terms of his self promotion. Energy, huh? Tyson's a self promoter, Drew, isn't he? He's just promoting. Oh, he's perfect. And and he's probably the one of the only boxers I would honestly say, if I saw him in a pub, I'd want to buy him a beer to actually have a chat with him because I reckon he's a good laugh, you know? Oh, he's a very um, good laugh. He's a good laugh, all right. Yeah, e- yeah e- exactly. But the whole, you know, mental health and all of that, I get what he did for that first fight with Wilder. I get that that was what the promotion was all about. And I'm sure he does suffer from something um like everyone does but i I just feel like now let's sort of move on from that and let's just talk boxing you know um i feel like it's just a bit too too repetitive even for me and i would say i'm a big fan of his and i'm just like telling the same stories now that they were telling three years ago aren't they they're telling the same story oh i was driving in my ferrari and i reached it and lost 10 stone. Yeah, exactly. It, it, and and, yeah, and I'm just more, like... Yeah. Move on from it now. You've cured it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You get your dad to fight Mickey for your wallet. Yeah, exactly. Money. That's exactly... But for depression and mental health. Yeah. <laughs> NHS. All right, then. Uh, let's back up a little bit. Do you think that uh, Liam Williams and Beefy Smith's a good fight for a trilogy? Um, I do, um, because A, Liam Smith hasn't, he's not getting any fights, and nor is Williams really at the minute. Um, so it makes sense because I think Williams is, you know, one of the most improved fighters, and, uh, you know, Ingle's got him in terrific shape, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, so. Um, he's like your you know, like he ate all his spinach. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. Um, yeah, so I, I just think this new improved Williams might do a good, might do a better job. So um, yeah, I, I I would watch that fight. Um, on paper, perhaps it's not a good fight, but if you just look at form, and, and it's something that I wanted to speak about as well, actually, that I didn't mention is boxing doesn't really take into. So, for example, again, we'll, we'll relate it to football or any other any other sport mm-hmm. that you can be world number one i.e. have the title or have the belts or whatever it is. But then the form of individuals is really good. So, example, Anthony Joshua, his form's really bad in terms of he, he's lost to Andy Ruiz. He's looked poor against Andy Ruiz. And I'll be honest, I don't think he looked good against uh, Povetkin. I would say Anthony Joshua's form, uh, form is really poor. And then you've got other heavyweights who's, for example, Dylan White before he's lost to Povetkin. His form was really high. And it's like, People don't take into consideration in boxing form and the fact that if they have the title belts, if that per- if, if let's just say Dylan White beats Anthony Joshua for for um, title belts, all of a sudden Dylan White is the number one guy, and we all know that's just not true, but that's how the sport works. And I just I don't that's something I don't uh, buy either. It can just be form or it it, it just because you have the title belts doesn't mean you're the number one boxer, as we know. Um, but it's just the way the sport is, I guess, sort of marketed. And I, I find it a little bit strange. Because. Um... All right, then. Uh, let me ask you. I'll put this one to you, then, Drew. Uh, if Anthony Joshua, right, retired tomorrow, who would be Eddie Earns' top five fighters? Top five? Jesus. Um, Billy Joe. Billy Joe, is he pay per view? No. Has he had a um, has he had a pay per view yet? No, not for um. No, he hasn't. No. We're gonna go Billy Joe. Who else? Dylan White. Dylan White. He's been beat twice. Never won a European. Never fought for a world. One. Well, yeah. Your, no. Of course. Your, um. And he's had five pay per view. Dylan White. <laughs> who's your third? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you got. Callum Smith. 
Yeah, go on, Callum Smith. Callum's not had a pay per view in England. Yeah, so Callum Smith. And he and he, and he, Eddie Hearn didn't get him his world title. It was Callum Sauerland who got him his world title shot in the WBSS. So you wouldn't say Eddie Hearn's kind of delivered. Yeah. Out, would you? So that's three. And Callum's uh, just lost against Kino. Who would you say is the fourth? Warrington. Warrington, they've not given him a pay per view yet. Who's the no, exactly? Who's the fifth? Um, <laughs> by pay per views, <laughs> you've got to go Lawrence Sacoli. Um, <laughs> no, uh, Sacoli. he's not um, a pay per view, and nobody had offered. No, I know. Um, Chisora, Katie Taylor. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Katie Taylor. But... Mm. How many of them are? Nah. How many of them would you say are elite? No, there are none. He, he, the thing is, this is what I was saying earlier. Like, they're, they're... Sky and Matchroom will have you to, basically. They'll tell you all of those are elite, but they're not. I would say the best one on paper out of all of them is Warrington and Smith, um, Callum Smith. However, personally, I don't think Callum Smith is very good. Um, oh, how can I say? A bit harsh. No, I... sorry. A bit harsh. Well, yeah, just... no, it is because he's got all the accolades, but. Ultimately, he beat George Groves, who, let's be honest, you know, goes back to your favourite, Carl Froch. Um, I just don't think, A, the George Groves that fought Carl Froch, has, he's never been the same. Um, he has never been the same. Um, I know he improved slightly under McGuigan, but he was not the same fighter as the, uh, the first two fights with Carl Froch. Oh. Um, and then... Obviously, he was injured, and and you've just seen in his latest interview um, on Life Stories, that was for his family. That was his payday. It was, you know, if I win, it's great. If not, it doesn't matter. It's all payday. So, you know, Cam Smith beat him, and I, I don't know. I don't, I, you know, Cam Smith is limited. We saw against uh, Canelo. I know Canelo's brilliant, but come on, you've got to, you've got to go for it a little bit. You've got to. You know, you think I, I Callum just, might just roll the dice now and Joe Gallagher? They might roll the dice and go for fights now that are going to blow our minds. No, I, I don't think so. No, I think uh, ultimately that whole camp, including Joe Gallagher, is just boring from interviews to the matchmaking to every. It's just boring. And that's why I don't rate that camp or that stable. They don't take the only person who's taken a good fight is. Um, it's a bit harsh. It is harsh, but it's kind of true. Like um, Callum Johnson, they rolled him out. Um, do you mean one... that these Joe? Do you do you mean Drew that the fighters who Joe Gallagher's got, they don't put themselves out there like Shannon Courtney, Dylan White, and Billy Joe uh, on social media every single day, constantly in our faces? Is that what you mean? No, I don't mean like that. I mean I ultimately. No, it, so it's, it's, it's a mix, right? Me, personally, I find the fighters quite boring. So when they're in interviews, there's nothing exciting about those fighters, right? Um, and Gallagher isn't exciting either. So when you've got no excitement, you better be good, right? And that's just how it is. And I don't think his fighters are particularly good. They have quite boring styles. Um, and we're not seeing them fight enough. So it comes back to his poor management. His poor management, he doesn't get them out enough, right? Although they might be financially doing very well, from a boxing perspective, I want to see good fights. And I want to see, I just want to see his fighters out there. I want to see them calling people out. I want to see them, why is, you know, Callum Smith, he's taking fights like Canelo on short notice. I know he was training, but I'm like, come on. I'm just, I don't know. I just I find that whole camp boring. I, I haven't really got a lot of time for Joe Gallagher actually as a as a trainer. Just purely on the fact that again he do, he doesn't fill me with any sort of. You don't believe his fighters ever actually go in there to win. They're just I don't know. I I can't really explain it. It doesn't it doesn't excite me at all. Both well, style. I, I've seen loads of videos of Callum Johnson calling out Boatsi and Yard, and no, it seems to happen. But when, when, when you're going on about management there, Natasha Jonas and Beefy are MTK, aren't they? They're not managed by Joe. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure Joe manages all that many out of that still. I'm not sure exactly which one. But uh, 
the, maybe it might be something behind the scenes, a money situation why these fights are not getting made because Callum Johnson's, he went and fought Baturbia, didn't he, and, and dropped him. And he's biggest puncher in world boxing with 100% KO ratio. Yes. So he's like an ice man, world champion, knocks everybody out from turning pro to defending his world title. So Callum Johnson drops the biggest ice man in boxing and got stopped himself fair enough, but nobody seems to be going near him now at the moment, do they? Because of that. No. I... Yeah, exactly. I think I think he basically he's um caused his own problem there. A he's got A a lack of promotion. Um B clearly he's not a money man, so he's not gonna make Eddie Hearn much money. So that there's a problem there. You're not going to get pushed there. And the truth is, he has a great chance or had a great chance of beating Barazzi. So therefore, they're never going to make that fight because Barazzi is considered, I guess, the cash cow out of those. And um, it's just not the case, is it? You know, um, Barazzi's career is, is flatline. I don't know what's happening. It's, I couldn't tell you. And that whole stable again is, is just doing nothing that side of it as well everyone just seems to be doing nothing Eddie Hearn and MTK I, I, I don't really know what's going on with these fighters um, why aren't they fighting it's if you can't get a fight it's right there just make it they're both doing nothing mm. yeah I see what you mean mate I see what you mean it's uh, well look I don't agree with you on that I just think that the idea and coming back to when we offers for Boatsy fight and short end at money and Natasha Jonas uh, were offered poor money to, to fight Terry Harper and stuff like that and I just think that sometimes a manager has to has to advise the fighters and say look I think that's poor money that you know and maybe you should try and get a better deal but who's to say that Joe Gallagher ain't plotting to go work with to fight on other shows we don't know do we? what's going on there but they're obviously they're not they're getting a bit of a raw deal at the moment aren't they from matchroom and it's big news in boxing that it looks like the it looks to me like they're being squeezed out by, by matchroom or i don't know but eddie were pretty harsh in his interview about joe gallagher wasn't he yeah i i agree i, I look that to me isn't healthy and i, I don't you know, I don't love that side of the politics. Um, what Joe Gallagher said was stupid, obviously. Um, but at the end of the day, it's boxing. It's not, it's nothing else. Like, Sometimes when you're in front of a camera, things come out wrong. I mean, I make that mistake every day myself. Sometimes comes, something comes out wrong and it can be misinterpreted. But I personally think that they've had a role. I've been a big critic of Joe Gallagher over years, especially for getting Crawler two fights with Linares and Paul Smith. Yeah. Paul Smith two fights with Abraham, uh, yeah. Crawler with Lomachenko and, and things like that. But they're going to do it best for their fighters, earning wise, aren't they? And they're good. You've got to be thick skinned as a trainer manager. And I can see where where it comes from at the time. But I'd like to think that they, they've they've worked with Matchroom ten years now, or, or however Joe's worked with Eddie. Yeah. But there's no. I think they deserved a little bit better than how they've been treated. That's just my opinion. I think Callum Johnson deserves a big fight with Matchroom after going and fighting Beta Beef when nobody wanted to go near him and doing Eddie Earn a favour. I think he deserves a proper fight, me. Do you? Yes, I, I, I completely agree with that, the, the sentiment side of it. I, I think I personally, that, that's my biggest problem with Eddie Hearn. He, you know, he pushes people like, or pushed people like Dave Allen front of us and look again I love Dave Allen in terms of how he comes across but come on we don't want to see him fight he's not he's not interesting right sky Whereas, analysis now isn't he he's a sky expert analysis guy now well of course he is he's uh, got a great amateur pedigree he knows exactly what he's talking about Dave Allen <laughs> not um, you know so uh, yeah he's probably going to come up with uh, he's going to be like I don't understand why they're not blocking with their face there so um yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I just think people like Dave Allen are pushed and you've got Callum Johnson who's not pushed when clearly people would like to see him. He's exciting and he's got a great story regarding yeah. his dad. You know, he's, he's, he's got everything that you would need to, to push him for two fights, mm. right? Give him a good payday. But of course, there's a problem with his trainer, and that's 
causing issues. Yeah, yeah. All right, then. Moving on from uh, Joe Gallagher's stable and why Callum Johnson, Natasha Jonas, Beefy and Callum and Morrison are not all getting the chance of it. Moving on. Uh, what do you think about the bias at the moment in pundits across the board at the moment? What we're being sold? <laughs> um, yeah. So, look, I, I was definitely a victim of this when I first started watching boxing. You know, you, you, you start watching, you're obviously a casual, you don't really know what you're watching, you're just hearing commentators, you're like, okay, great. Um, you just assume that's how the fight's going. But now it's, the bias now is on a new level. It's because it's, it's always been promotional wars, but now it's all about publicity. Like they, they don't even acknowledge, especially Luke Campbell just the other night. Luke Campbell, okay, I don't think he won many rounds apart from, I think he only actually won one round when he knocked um, Garcia down. Huh? He won one round, round two. That's the only round I gave him. Yeah, exactly. But it doesn't mean it wasn't a competitive fight and he wasn't doing good things, yeah. right? And this is where people in boxing have changed. Yes, Garcia was winning the fight, absolutely. But we've had a guy who's just knocked him down in one punch and he's actually handling himself well. And all the rounds are pretty competitive, apart from maybe one or two, where Garcia was taking and, and dictating it completely. But it was all competitive and he's still very much in the fight. However, the commentators are not going to acknowledge any work that the actual boxing or the boxing that's going on, they just acknowledge the fact that he's like Oscar De La Hoya and he's the hope of boxing and he's, it's just rubbish, right? And Sky are just as bad. And I think nothing sums up Sky more than Povetkin, Dylan White. And, you know, just the way they were going on. And like I was with my mate when that fight was going on. He doesn't know anything about boxing. And I'm like, why are they not? I said, Dylan White is winning this fight. Yes, but they're not acknowledging anything Povetkin is doing with either body shots or any sort of work or the fact that he's within inches of actually connecting with some of his haymakers. They don't, they don't say anything. They're just like Dylan White, complete control, cruise control. Oh, talking about Joshua. And then all of a sudden, you know, we know the clip, he gets absolutely KO'd and people act like it's a shock. And it's like, well, no, not really. If you look at it before the fight, Dylan White is quite, he's just a decent heavyweight. And Povetkin is, you know, on the decline, but look at his pedigree. You know, his skill set is, there's such a gap in skill set that the age difference is, is less, you know, so it's less of an issue. And don't get me wrong, if there's a rematch, I back Dylan White, but the, the commentators act as if there is no threat at times. And you it's like, totally wrong. And, I just, and, it, and then it's, the opposite as well. So, for example, if Povetkin did lose and he didn't knock out Dylan White, it's, you know, oh, he had a terrific camp. He trained right. He did everything right. He was game. It was the best Povetkin we've seen since since Klitschko. It was even better than the one since Klitschko, actually. You know, it's this this whole carry-on of, of, of rubbish that you get when we all know Povetkin's completely over the hill, has been for years, even when he fought Joshua over the hill, but why don't they say it? You know, tough, tough, rugged, durable, all that. Yeah, yeah. Compelling game. Uh, yes, it, spice. Yeah, it, exactly. And look, I laugh a bit all now because I, I watch all the different channels. We, you just got to laugh, right? But it's it's actually embarrassing. Uh, Bean is is definitely one of the worst for it. Although I do like his commentary at times because he's quite exciting. Um, he, he is the worst. Don't say that he bad at Smith, tell him he's exciting because he'll get excited. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. But you've got to give the, you know, praise with um, with the negatives, I suppose. Yeah. All right. Then. Do you think Dylan White has built his set up on social... Oops, we've gone off. Oh, yeah. oh no, I'm still here. Don't worry. Sorry. Do you, do you feel, Drew, that Dylan White has been built up as this... Iceman, bad, bad South, South London, Brixton, roadman gangster who, who, who goes around and wants to tear up. But yeah, do you feel that deep down he ain't got the skill set to match the profile he's built on IFL and Sky? Because he's still only got a vacant British to his name, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I was a huge fan of Dylan White. Um, I, I love 
everything. He was a bit of a throwback, so I loved everything about him at the start. You're talking about um, Jack Dempsey, Drew. <laughs> yeah, no, no, exactly, exactly. No, but from from I'm from South London as well, really close to where he is. And, you know, someone I can buy into. Like, I don't think he's a complete bad man or anything like that. Yeah. But I'm like, yeah, he's local. I'm going to support him. I really hope he beat Anthony Joshua. He put in a great performance, I guess. Uh, I personally thought it was just a good performance. You know, he came close um, with an injury, so it was good. But it was better than what people expected. And I just thought, I like this guy. Um, I liked uh, the way he was marketed as well. He joined Matchroom and I was behind him. And then he sort of did a Tyson Fury, just repetitive. Oh, I'll fight anyone. Oh, I'm number one. Oh, Come I'm this on. Come I'm... on. Yeah, exactly. And, and the truth is, his career has, from business perspective, look, brilliant. Dylan White is a rich man. He has his own stable now. Anyway. He's, managing, he's managing lots of fighters and He's propelled himself brilliantly. From a boxing standpoint, I think he's a bit of a fraud in a, in a sense that, you know, he doesn't want to travel to fight Pulev. Now, why not? I know he got more money to fight Parker, but ultimately it's just that sort of attitude of we agreed to fight, we're going to fight Pulev. Oh, no, we're going to... It's a David Hay move, you know, all about money, publicity, and all about his pocket. And that's fine, but don't expect people that like boxing to then love you back because we're not going to. Yeah. We're not going to love guys who take on Oscar Rivas instead of. I know Oscar Rivas is considered quite good, but he's a small heavyweight. And let's be honest, Dylan White cheated. He cheated. Like, there is no two ways about it. He has done. And Oscar it's just. Rivers, it's, yeah. yeah, I just. I don't, I don't like it. And I also don't like the way he treated Tibbs. Um, and it's nothing to do with the fact that he split from Tibbs. That's fine. That's up to boxers. They do what they want to do. But it's how he did it. And the, it's just a lack of respect Yeah. Uh, to a guy, that, a guy that did so much for him and clearly would have gone to the trenches and to war with him. And all of a sudden, he just bins him from an email from Portugal. I, I, yeah, no time for that. Yeah. All right, then. Well, we're moving on from the can't, man. Anybody who wants it can't get it. Uh that's still in white, by the way. Uh, what do you think about yeah. Luke Campbell going and fighting on the zone in UK when Sky have built him up all his career? Do you think Eddie's got a bit of a brass neck on him doing that? Um, look, I mean, to be honest, for all my sins, I, I bought the subscription to the zone. I think um, I like boxing, so I'm kind of the um, kind of that guy you know I pay for pay-per-views even though I know they're not pay-per-view worthy and I tell all my friends not to I still pay um I personally don't really care what channel they get put on me personally but from Sky's pr perspective they need to not ditch Eddie Hearn but they need to start doing a lot more with NTK they need to sort of explore other avenues because that man just cares about his his pound notes so and he should do but ultimately, Sky are going to end out, end up losing out here massively. All their best fighters are are just going to be fighting elsewhere because the money's not on Sky at the moment. So I, I, I can't really. I mean, Sky, for me, they signed that exclusive deal, and I just think that's the, that is when casual boxing reached new levels. It's when it became the cult. As soon as it was exclusive, they controlled who was on the media who they could push, who was seen at world level, who was uh, ideal matchmaking. And, 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 you know, it just, it became, for me, uh, exactly like you say, it became a cult. And as soon as it became a cult, that's when the respect for uh, the boxing purists has gone. What do you think about Tony Bellew as a pundit? Uh, rubbish, um, pure rubbish. Um, and, you know, I, I watch... Uh, the asylum podcast and obviously he's always saying and the jokes you know about you can't have an opinion unless you've done it and he he speaks about football for example and i just think he talks so much rubbish and like you say he he hasn't beat anybody he's absolutely beat nobody he is a very average boxer and like like i've said you respect every boxer that boxes it's a tough sport it's hard you've got to make your money and i and that's why i like eddie Hearn, but um, because everyone's made their money. However, 
Tony Bellew is an example of a sky cult where the man is very basic and I would say European level personally yeah. and he's gone on to achieve so many things financially for such a basic fighter I, I can't help but say did well done you think he overachieved um, did he overachieve I'm not sure I think he overachieved on paper but actually he doesn't have any wins that suggest he overachieved does he um, no. so Jumping over, has he? No, exactly. But again, like I said, financially, he's done brilliantly for his ability. But from a boxing standpoint, Tony Bellew is not someone I would watch. Um, you know, watch in terms of he's not a prospect. He's not anyone. For, no one would fear Tony Bellew. Just, it, it, you know, he's not a good boxer at the, the highest level. Never was, never could be. But yet Sky pushed it as if he's a proper world champion and he smashed a prime David Hay. And it's just, it's all embarrassing. It's, it's all embarrassing. What do you think about Johnny Nelson, a.k.a. the company man? Um, I don't really... I don't have a huge problem with Johnny Nelson. And, and the reason why is because I, I just think that, yes, he licks ass. Yes, he talks a lot of shit. But... He does it just to build a profile. He does it to be a out there pundit. Um, I a straight face though when you said that. <laughs> yeah, I, he 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 just he just does it to to be to to just say things so he gets spoke about and Sky gets spoke about. It's something to write about. I'm not sure he actually believes he what he's us. saying. Johnny Nelson trolls us with these one liners he comes out with on telly. You think he trolls us to give it like a, di a different opinion to be talk to get everybody talking, or is he yes. that far deluded? <laughs> no, I don't think he is that far deluded. I, I, you know, you look at his style uh, when he actually fought. Oh. And look, it was boring. It was it was it was dreadful. It was boring. It was uh, quote unquote the Ingle style, which isn't a style, but whatever. Um, yeah. It, yeah, old Bob Graham style is the Ingle style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It and was the petrified and all that. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny Nelson was petrified of getting hit. That's what his style was. Yeah. So you know, wouldn't go to war, Nelson. So I just think go you've got Nelson. You've got you've got him and his style and what he fought, and that's one thing. But now as a pundit, he's just, he's just rubbish. Says a lot of nonsense. Again, just promotes everything within Matchroom. And look, good luck to him. I've got no problem with it, but I love the fact that there's channels like yours and uh, other channels that you know that that expose him for being a rimmer and an absolute you know idiot. Doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah. What do you think about? Uh, we spoke about Bean, haven't we? Johnny Nelson and Bellew. Obviously, they're the free Bean Mason. But what do you think about Gareth Gareth A Davis challenging to be a Bean Mason? Right. Um. I've got something to say about him and what I've got to say about him is it's not nice or whatever, but look, I, when I first started watching, I was watching everything. Uh, you know, I, I, I saw Johnny Nelson on the TV. I saw Adam Smith and I was like, okay, I understand why they're there. And then I just see some fat bloke in a blazer with some weird chain hanging down from his jeans who has never done any sort of, you can just see he doesn't, he doesn't, doesn't look right and no way should this man be involved in boxing he just looks like a crazy journalist who should be talking about you know uh, history teaching history somewhere right that's yeah. what he looks like in a, in a and, and he's there doing boxing punditry and i'm sure he knows his stuff but it just it doesn't sit right with me this man is not someone who should be in boxing i want to see real pundits and and people who have actual things to talk about this man is is just basically someone who does literature and can spin a good sentence together and make it sound really intelligent he's terrible for the sport that's the only way i can describe gareth davis he's terrible and he and he absolutely bums um fighters and he'll say anything in an interview like he pretends he's tyson fury's best mate but he's also anthony joshua's best mate i, I don't get it personally he's everybody's I, I just, best mate uh, yeah I, I don't get that like even me um i have my favorites and it's clear who my favourites are, but they're not above criticism and they're not, you know, and, and praise. So I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. A bit like Coogan, really. 
Could you imagine Gareth A. Davis at a dinner table spinning some of his stories, sat there with Jimmy Tibbs, Peter Fury, Martin Bowers, uh, uh, and people like that having to sit in their company? Do you think they'd put up with any of that nonsense he comes out with? <laughs> uh, well, that's what I'm saying. It just doesn't belong. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He does, it, and I, it sounds bad, but it's just it's just true. Like, uh, yeah, he just he, he just looks, he just sticks out like a sore thumb. He's not interesting. He's not engaging. And I don't know. I, I don't really understand him. I don't know how he's got a career in boxing, personally. Yeah. What do you think about the rumour that Adam Smith's going to make Dave Caldwell a made man and induct him into the Bean Masons for the rimming he's been doing lately? You know, the Sunday morning, Dave... Caldwell's sermon, you know, about the previous night's fights. You yeah. Know that Dave Caldwell's inducted into the Hall of Beam. You think that uh, now that he's in the court, we're, we're going to see more of him on our TVs, little Penfold? <sighs> Another person, like, I, I don't mind him, but I just think he's not even a good coach I don't, I don't really understand how i don't understand how these people are reaching the level i mean we do know they literally just sit there licking balls and sniffing ass like hanging around like a bad smell like at the shows and it and, and it's nothing is due to achievements he's achieved nothing mm. he's just been you know his most famous moment is when david hay called him penfold it's like literally that he's a joke um as a coach he's bang average um typical uk coach who talks an okay game but as soon as they get into world level with their fighters it's there's not even a game plan it's just literally how much of a beating are they going to take before i throw in the towel that's his game plan um literally can i throw in the towel at the right moment because they don't set anybody out to win he's not a good coach he he never he hasn't done anything just look what he did with david price that just tells you where he's at as a coach, yeah, and I don't, I don't want to see him on the TV. He's, he's, yeah, personally, he just stick to IFL. That's fine. Yeah, how could he hold pads for David Price? I, yeah, what? I don't know. I, I, yeah, I just can't explain it. I, I can't explain. It's literally, I can't even think how he's got to where he's got. What did he do? to sort of achieve what he, I don't know. Like, it, literally, Eddie I don't Earns know. Eddie mate, isn't he? He's Eddie Earns mate. Yeah, so he laughs at his jokes. Yeah, yeah probably. What do you think about uh, YouTubers who've got access and they know what's going on, but they're not pushing for the right questions? Obviously, I have a problem with this, but I, I, I push it on here, don't I? But I'm asking you what you think to... You know, your seconds out, IFL, behind the gloves, boxing, social. They're all, they're all in a strong position to ask real questions. But do you feel that these people don't ask the real questions, don't push it? Because there's been incidents in the last 12 months where there has been interviews and they've been took down, things like that. The Mark Tibbs one got took down, didn't it, off seconds out, were it? And the Mark Tibbs one on IFL got took down. Obviously, Dylan White were behind that. Do, do, do you feel that these people should be their own men and stick to try stick stick to being YouTubers, meet media slash journalists instead of being controlled by these people? For example, we all know that Eddie Earn told Coogan that he had to ask Tyson Fury about the seven million to charity, and Coogan's obviously where he becomes in the middle of it. He asked it and he got shut down by Tyson, didn't he? Do you feel that these people should just stick to being stick to being neutral? Mm, yeah, I, I would say yes to you based on the fact that we're boxing fans. But I think you know and I know that realistically, the amount of money Coogan's receiving from Matchroom, um, that he can't go against the grain, can he? He can ask difficult I mean, questions. the access that he's got and the videos that they're churning out and the money they earn off it, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, but also also the stuff like Eddie Hearn. You know Eddie Hearn is paying for their flights over to America. You know Eddie Hearn wants, needs IFL to be at the shows, right? So, so to, to push that narrative. 
and that's you know Sky use it as well. So I imagine he's on Natrium and Sky payroll. Um, obviously, the same way he is for for BT when he works for them. So like, but it's very clear, you know, who he. You know, it doesn't take a genius to go look. It wouldn't surprise me if Matchroom and Sky are paying him a lot of the money that he, his channel gets. Yeah, I imagine those guys pay way more than, for example, YouTube pay. Um, oh. And of course, and, and and BT, I can't imagine are. You know, I, I don't think BT's for hardcores and Sky is for casuals, but it's sort of like Sky is definitely for casuals and BT's for people like myself in betweens. Um, a little bit more sort of less known fighters, probably better matchmaking, but, um, you know, you're not going to see Coogan at too many of those shows. Yeah, I'd like to see Coogan turn up at Mick Wales' gym and give Josh Whalen, Dempsey Whalen, and uh, young Alex Taylor and people like that, some a, a bit of, you know, kids that are going to turn over. I'd like to see that. I'd like. Yeah, to- I, I would also like to see him do some favours for Mick Hennessy because he was he was loving McKennessy when he had Tyson Fury so you know I, I'm not one for just doing favours but ultimately you made a lot of money and you know you were in Dazzledorf you did all those things with Tyson Fury he joined the after parties he was doing all that yeah and then all of a sudden Mick Hennessy hasn't got the stable he once did and you don't see people at those shows I, I, I think that's bang out of order personally and I, I think yeah, that, that to me just sums boxing up. Yeah. Uh, well, Tyson uh, and, and uh, Mick used to be really close and K- Coogan were all, always at them shows. But exactly. When you build relationships with fighters and then they split with... I'm there, don't worry. But when you build relationships with fighters and then they split with certain promoters and managers and trainers and that, if you've built a relationship up that and you're getting on all right and then you split, you, you're sort of like torn. This is why it's best to be neutral. And then one party can't see what you're talking to him for because there's a lot of that goes on in boxing. You know what I mean? And yeah. I'm thinking of that myself. And the easy answer for him to say is, well, it's business, isn't it? Got to move forward and all, all that carry on. You know what I mean? But uh, Yeah. One of them things, isn't it? But I, I, I just... I just feel that they should all be neutral and share it out, share the access out. Let's see some of these other small YouTubers like uh, whoever. Uh, there's lot, Is it On The Ropes or something? There's uh, Del Boy Box. And there's all these young kids who, who want to wanna do this. A lot younger than me. But yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not many, that, there's not many coming through who want to do it because I won't be doing this forever. I've got, it's not financially viable is the word i won't do this forever that's just just my passion but if somebody wants to be took seriously and 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 do a youtube channel they've got to get access to these big shows and we can't seem to have the same old people churning out the same old stories and the same old questions and and mate and jobs for the boys and there's nobody really pushing what should be said at these yeah you know what I mean? yeah you also don't get any different opinions. So you just get the same old, as we say, the same old people. And again, you know, Ben Davison all of a sudden is on every single channel oh, giving his two points. Why, and it's why, like, I get it. Yeah. Why is nobody saying, Drew, that Ben Davison's been sacked by Billy Joe and Tyson Fury? Because Ben Davison's affiliated with MTK. But if he weren't, there will be statements out saying we're, we've, we've, uh, we've moved on from Ben now and we're moving to so-and-so. Because they don't want to burn bridges with MTK, they're not going to say that. But when you've been training somebody and been close to them, like Ben, well, with Billy Joe and Tyson, then you've been let go. That means that the, the, the world champion undefeated Billy Joe and Tyson have kind of worked him out, haven't they? They think that he can't improve them. You see where I'm coming from? And he's not for them. At the time, he might have been a good fit. But... Now I, I think he's been found out. That's my opinion. Because if not, he's still yeah. Doing I, it, he? Yeah, I, I personally see Ben Davison as like an assistant coach. Personally, I think boxing they have all these people in their teams, but they need to start looking at other sports. For me, Ben Davison is someone that you want to work with to work on your defensive 
uh, side of the game, right? So I don't think he's the fighter, sorry, he's the trainer you want if you're going to rip titles away. And I'd say similar to Peter Fury. I think Peter Fury is brilliant. I actually think he's probably one of the best trainers. I think even could be the best trainer in the UK. But his style is very much one that you're probably not going to go and rip the title away. So you're not going to have much chance in those big fights against uh, home favourites, i.e. I'm shocked Tyson Fury went and took the belts away from Klitschko uh, with that style. Um, I think Parker is another example of where that style probably wasn't conducive to a good result. I think Ben Davidson is like the uh, Peter Fury light. I think he's a, like a rip-off version of him. Um, he's younger, so more fashionable. But Ultimately, I think you should have him as your defensive coach, not as um, not as your sort of mainstay in your camp. What has Ben Davidson done with anybody who has gone to him from debut or who has gone to him f- from having losses and that he's improved, improved him? Well, that's it. You, you can't really make a good I argument. No, because he's only a young kid, Ben, isn't he? So time's going to tell. No, look, look I, I, I think, think Ben Davidson... Yeah, I'm sure Ben Davison will be very good, a bit like uh, Shane McGuigan. They're going to be great coaches and they arguably are already good coaches, but it doesn't mean they don't have flaws. Yeah, so Ben Davison is, 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 a, is, a, is, I guess, a boring style um, that he sort of preaches. It's a hit, you know, stick and move, um, but it's not one that's going to progress fighters, as Billy Joe and um, Tyson Fury would probably say if they were honest. It's, you know, could, is it because of Ben Davison that Tyson Fury didn't win the, the original uh, uh, Fury fight? Perhaps, you don't know. Maybe it's because he got in shape and, you know, you can look at many different things, but look at Frotch, Frotch, not Frotch, um, Freddie Roach. Um, he was saying that, um, you know, be more aggressive and you'll beat Wilder. He was saying that's what he would have told him to do. And look, he's, he, he left Ben Davison and when went and be more aggressive and with Sugar Hill and he, he wiped the floor of Wilder. So, look, Ben Davison, as good as he is, clearly is not an offensive coach and ultimately offensive coaches are the ones that, that, that have the winning fighters. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good point. Where do you see Huey Fury going from now then? So I love Huey Fury. I said before, I, I really enjoy watching him fight in terms of his skill set. It doesn't mean that he's not in boring fights. He's definitely in boring fights. Um, but I would say he's more of a hardcore slash fan favourite in terms of if you appreciate the sport, you can really see that Huey Fury is literally just... he He's so close, it's annoying. Um, like, I look at him and go, he's got everything apart from this one ingredient and that one ingredient is just to be a bit like his cousin, like a bit special, a bit horrible, a little bit just, there's just, he's just missing that, that spark. Um, But look, he's going to be around for a long time. I can definitely see him picking up a world title um, because the current crop are going to come and go and he's going to be there. And I think he'll be, you know, he beats Dubois, for example. I think um, he's, He's all wrong for someone like, I think he's all wrong for someone like uh, Dylan White. He's all wrong for someone like Joe Joyce, um, because I think you'd be able to time these guys and get into the rhythm with them and sort of outbox them. Why are you sat there for Rocky? Uh, Who is sat there? <laughs> hmm. oh, go on. Sorry, yeah, go on, mate. Yeah, I see, I see where you're coming from, but I think that Yui against Joyce is a good fight, don't line. No, yeah, no. So, so do I, and I, I think he actually wins. Though I, I think Huey Fury would win that purely on the fact that I think Joyce, as good as he is, is is in one motion. It's just steady, and where Huey Fury is just a na- you can just see he's a natural boxer. He he he's got he's got skills for days. His movement is class. Um, I think he would be able to as soon as he gets the timing of those fighters, and hopefully doesn't get cut. Yeah, um, because that is a problem. But I can see him sort of uh, winning those fights quite comfortably. Uh, on points, I don't think he's going to knock anyone out, obviously, but um, I can see him winning those, those fights on points. Joe Joyce is nine years older than you, if you're a... Exactly. Nine years. 
So yeah, exactly. It's time for Yui Fury, isn't there? Yeah, I, I, I do think the skin issues um, that he's had uh, are a problem, though. I mean, that's why he gets cut. It's, you know, it's no secret. And I think that those cuts are, in all the big fights, they're just going to they're just going to keep opening. I, I, I just have a feeling um, that that will be the, probably the biggest problem that he's going to have. Mm, I'm sure his dad will develop a style so he don't get it. Yeah. But, uh, all right, then. Well, listen, thanks for coming on, uh, Drew. You've been a real tonic. You know you're boxing. You're, uh, you, you're, I'm going to give you your porky hardcore uh, moniker. Well done. <laughs> I'll expect that in the post, yeah. No, yeah, you're not, you're not a, uh, you're not a casual. So you're definitely not a casual. You're not, a, you're not half in between. You, you definitely balls deep, a uh, hardcore. So, good on you. But it's brave of you to come oh, on. I'll be smiling all day. You will. There's a lot of people who have a lot to say in comment section, and they, they don't really come on channel, uh, basically, because a lot of people. Yeah, I don't, I don't get that. Well, everybody's welcome. Yeah, I don't get that. The emails, if you want to come on, is porkycorner at mail.com. Not porkies, just porkycorner at mail.com. No capital letters. And uh, everybody's welcome if I can get you all in. It's a time thing, but at the moment, I can't get in my office and my computer's knacked up there anyway. So it's just a case of doing them here, isn't it, these Zooms? But yeah, exactly. We've been out on location this week. We filmed uh, at, at low. Crawford Ashley's gym, so I put a bit of money into that video as well. So it'll be a good production on that. So that's being done now. But other than that, we can only try to mm. do the best of a bad job, can't we, Drew? Well, exactly. So yeah, before I go, mate, I just want to say keep up the good work. Um, enjoy your channel. Obviously, that's why I've uh, asked yeah. to come on. But I know this YouTube game is not easy. So you oh, know, keep oh. it up. We. we look we, we need your content, mate, and um, yeah, ultimately uh, keep it keep it the same. Keep keep it true to, to how you're doing it at the moment because that's what's entertaining. I, I, for me, I only watch three channels: um, the the Asylum, the podcast. I love that um, yourself and um, Ultra, Ultra Tech. Tech. But Ultra Tech <laughs> doesn't do enough content because he's working. But I, I love um, Ultra Tech's brilliant. Um, people, well. say that, so, yeah, these... people say that Ultra Tech, Focus Corner, and Boxing Aside, and they say they're the big free hardcore channels. That's what people in the industry tell me. So I think that's good, isn't it? We are fighting back. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure it's true because I don't know all the channels out there. But um, yeah, definitely the ones I watch anyway. So Thank you, yeah, keep it up, mate. Thank you very much for having me. You take care, Drew. Have a good day. Cheers, mate. Bye. And you, mate. Ciao. Bye, bye, bye. Yes. <laughs> you like that one, didn't you? Right. First of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me porkycorner at mail.com all right shout out to innovation alloys and south yorkshire packaging all right don't forget to subscribe keep on trucking <laughs> <laughs>